Let's get into it. I'm playing this a lot now. Let's go. Man, I'm the street. Come on, man. Real talk. I know rap like the back of my hand, you know. Let's go. <laughs> it's just hard, like, you gotta start with the beat, man. Let's go, Gunner. My hand, I. Then the trend, facts. Yup. What I'm saying. Mm hmm. What the fuck you niggas I was playing. Yo, what's Nicky playing? Alright. Love this record. Now let's get into Schoolboy. <laughs> you already know the deal. I play this instrument. <laughs> um, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Uh, Y'all have been asking me what I thought about this um, Blue Lips album. Well, I've been putting it off because <laughs> I mean I knew I, I just I just got the vibe right away. You know I've been listening to rap a long time, so you already know when you hear some weak shit, you know kind of where things are going. So, today I'm kind of going to be dissecting Schoolboy Q. I think, let me first start off with talking about Blue Lips, right? And why, obviously, it's completely disappeared from the conversation um, and came and went, right? Because it wasn't very good. It was kind of obvious to me personally. And as usual, I'll tell you what the signs were. So, the first couple of things, I got some notes here. The bad signs I always get when number one the first sort of like releases of leading up to the album so the first sort of videos he did were these sort of documentary style things he's in the studio and they'd have like three different songs in them shits so he's like recording one song you know sort of uh, a video of that and then it switches to like a music video that he shot of a different song um and to me it was very scattered and it, to me, like I, the songs themselves sounded like a meandering mess. But when you put that out there, essentially you're telling me as a listener or a consumer that you don't really know which of these songs is hot. And you want me to tell you which one of them is hot. And if you don't really know what's hot or your team doesn't really know what's hot, that's a bad sign. That means you've recorded essentially a bunch of whoosh, right? Nothing that's going to hit. So you're waiting for me to be in the comments or to jump on the TikTok or whatever and, and take a particular snippet and then you're gonna put money into that particular song or something and that would be your single. So that was a bad sign to me off the rip. Um, the second bad sign to me was obviously when the album cover came, I, I don't like stupid album covers. Uh, right off the bat, I looked at the album cover. Uh, it's garish, it's vague, it's pretty silly, all things considered. I'm like, what's the theme here? Is this? You know, it's voodoo, like, is that, like, you know, I, I, don't, I didn't know what he was getting at, and it didn't seem to fit anything that he really wanted to talk about. So right away, the album cover just kind of put me off. And then, of course, the third and very prominent feature that we see in WAC albums, long-ass track lists. Um, you know, a lot of tracks, right? So it just tells me right away there's no direction every time. And to be honest with you, that's kind of what I got listening to this. I skimmed it. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I'm very good at listening to stuff very fast, so I can tell. I've been hip-hop a long time, man, so I can just tell when something's really working or not working. And hip-hop, the beauty of it is that it's it's a formula. It's, it's Once you figure out the formula of the song or the formula of the genre, you can, you know, you can kind of tell pretty quickly if something is working or not. So, the first song on the album is Funny Guy. It's meandering. It doesn't go anywhere. Again, pretty much symbolic of the album as a whole. Blue lips. Lips of what? <laughs> Why are they blue? What's this got to do with shit? Um, so, you know, that it's funny because that song, as weak as it is, you only know it's rap because he mentions hoes and money bags. <laughs> Other than that, which is, to me, a signal to the casuals. Like, hey, you're, you're listening to rap, you know? But the truth of the matter is that song is not really a hip-hop record. It's it's like some, I don't know, alternative rock shit. I, I don't even really know. Um, and right away signals that you're going to be listening to something that's, like, alternative and uh, full of, like, beat switches. And the truth is, these beat switches are happening because all these beats are boring. It's, it's just trying to kind of keep you invested, I would say. Um, but not in a in, in a superficial, artificial type of way. Oof. You already know this. Let's go. 
So this is classic. I'm gonna talk about this in a bit, right? If you've never listened to this instrumental, I I would say really sit and listen to Brand New Guy, the beat, just on its own. And you'll realize this shit is really, this is a game changing beat, 100%. I, I may have talked about this before on my channel, but this is a game changing beat. It literally changed the sound of rap. I'll get to that maybe another day. Um, but anyway, so I'm listening to this, all this beat switches and stuff, and it's supposed to give you the impression of a wildly creative schoolboy Q, jazz-like kind of thing, um, that ambiance. But in truth, it, it just spells boring and meandering to me personally. Um, now, I'm going to highlight a couple of songs I heard. I would say that I just want to riff on a bit. Yearn 101. I mean, this sounds like a terrible Danny Brown song from the 2010s. I mean, if you all remember, um, I think he had an album called Old English or something like that. He, he had these songs that were just kind of like these EDM and they were terrible. So that's what Year in 101 reminds me of. Uh, this song, Lovebirds. See, this is a random ass beat that goes nowhere. He's talking about sucking dick and then it switches to a ballad vibe right away. <laughs> like, that is aimless trash to me, personally. Um, then first, he's talking about being the first one to hit it. I'm pretty sure Ray J has already talked about this. It was immature then, it's immature now. And this has always been a problem to me with Schoolboy Q. It's that this immaturity, and I'm gonna get to that. Um, Back in Love. Now, Back in Love, I would argue, is probably the best song on this uh, album, even though I don't think it's a good song. But this is kind of more Schoolboy Q's traditional sort of style, quote unquote. And of course, it's the one that he commits to the most. There's no weird beat change ups, it's like an actual beat. Uh, I mean, at the end, there's like a slight little switch up. But again, this kind of proves the point, right? Like, when you get a... It's not a great beat, but when you get a beat that evokes some sort of feeling and uh, gets the artist to think or to commit, they're not doing these, you know, silly switch ups and shit like that. Like, that, that stuff when it's aimless and, you know, they don't really know where to go for the rest of the two minutes, you know? that That's how it reads to me, personally. Um, pig Feet. This sounds like a lame version of that part. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, yeah, this was a for very forgettable rap album. And like I said, people don't talk about it anymore. It came and went. Y'all were asking me to do a review on it and then stopped asking. <laughs> and it's all good. I, I, it, 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 look, if you don't see a review from me, there's a new album that drops. And I don't talk about it within, let's say, like three or four days. Um, it probably it was trash. <laughs> you can go ahead and assume that I thought it was trash and I'm gonna get around to it or maybe I'll never get around to it. Uh, because obviously if I think it's phenomenal or if I think it's strong, I'm gonna comment on it. I'll find the time, you know what I mean? But for whack releases and shit, people you making albums that they don't really put in no effort into, I'm sorry, I'm a busy dude. I'm not gonna really make the time to just like jump on the internet to talk about how whack it is. It's almost a waste of my time, respectfully. Um, so, the thing is, Q, I, I want to talk about Q overall as, a, as an artist, because time has passed now, it's been about 15 or so years, wow, time flies, man, it's crazy to think about it, like, in a sense, like, let's say, you know, 2011 is when I kind of was, like, aware of Schoolboy Q, so we're looking at, yeah, let's say 13 years, and he was probably maybe doing music before that, but the point is that Schoolboy Q has been around for a while, and it's... I'm not surprised to see where he's ended up musically, to be honest with you. And even fame-wise, quote-unquote, um, I could have seen a lot of that coming. And I, and I kind of remember telling people that um, he, was, he was limited. I, I saw some of these uh, limitations pretty early. So I kind of want to talk about that. I think the first thing, like I always say when you talk about rap, is you got to talk about what does the beat sound like, right? So as I'm playing this brand new guy shit, like... I'm going to get to Call of the Greens. I think we should play this beat, actually. The number one thing I've always said about a rapper is their beats. It's like, and their beats aren't just catchy. They're not just supposed to be, like, things that chart or... It's not like that. They're supposed to give you an insight into their emotional state, if that makes sense, and kind of their world and where they, what they represent and who they are and what they think about. Those are the greatest beats, and when they're done really, really well, they really stand out and they, in fact, speak for a whole group of people. Now, the problem to me with Schoolboy Q is he's had some good beats. This is one of them. Call of Greens is a good beat. 
um, Man of the Year, Studio, Hands on the Wheel. These are all good beats. They're not game changing. There's nothing game changing in any of these. Um, and the thing is, when you have, and I would argue a lot of the other beats are just not really memorable, but when you have beats that are okay, they're, they're good, but they're not necessarily great, you really got to step in and flex your personality because that's when you can then take the song to the great level, right? And this is where, again, we have to talk about Q, right? Because, like, this beat, for example, gives me Cherche La Dose energy, right? It's that sort of... I don't know. So that's how I think of it. But Ghostface kill, comes in and kills it with his personality. Like, if your regular person raps on Cher Shayla goes, they, they wouldn't know what to do. And frankly, that's why you don't really hear people freestyling over that shit. Because it's not a beat that, like, really, like, it makes it easy for you to hop on and, and sound dope. Like, you have to come in and flex your personality to make it dope. And that's, like, something that obviously is, is an issue. Um, let's look at this. The other decent beat that he did was... Um, hmm... I think I mentioned having hands on the wheel. Yeah. I mean, you can easily get forgotten, man. Like, the truth of the matter is that Brand New Guy is the hottest beat this dude ever rapped on. It's a game changer beat, and that's why we remember Schoolboy Q as being Mr. Brand New Guy, ultimately. Um, ironically, the only other beat that Q, Schoolboy Q came close to, like, that was, I would say, it maybe game changer-ish, but at least a hard street record, something that I think he could have really made a bonafide classic on is Nightmare on Fig Street. Um, Nightmare on Fig is a dope beat, which is ASAP. <laughs> ASAP tie beats the dead. It's still ASAP. Um, and again, it just shows you what ASAP brought to the game, man. They, they gave waves for all these guys. And Q wasted that beat. So, it, it, you know, ultimately... I don't think he really did much on it, and it's it's a, it's a shame because it shows his limitations, whether conceptually or even vocally. Um, but the fact of the matter is that we remember that beat being so hard, or at least the, the you know those who have heard it, that he even has a channel called Back on Fig that the name Fig Street sticks out because of that, and that's what I'm trying to say. Like you need to make those records that that show your personality, who you're from, that are kind of like a lifetime stamp on who you are, right? You gotta rhyme on memorable shit, B, because at the end of the day, memorable shit, memorable beats are the ones that catapult you, really, to any kind of long-lasting success in this music shit. And all of the great rappers have all rapped on memorable shit. There's not a single one of them that is, that is considered a great rapper and they didn't rap on something that was a game-changing beat. It just doesn't exist. Now, Schoolboy Q, as I've said, my issue with Schoolboy Q is I don't really know who Schoolboy Q is exactly, right? Who is he really? You know, we know that he's a low-level street dude from LA, okay? Sure. We know he likes bitches, right? He mentions them all the time. We don't even know why he likes them, but we know he likes them. He's kind of like an outline of a, of a person, but he's not a real person, and that's been an issue, and I noticed that very early. And I think it's something that's plagued him, to be honest with you. Now, I know he wears bucket hats, right? Like I'm wearing. But you see, his bucket hats, like, this to me is more of like, it's monochrome. It's kind of, you know, it's more of a hip-hop shape. The stuff that he be wearing is like, <laughs> it's like flowery on alternative. So I'm like, uh, what is this? It's kind of an immediate conflict because on one hand, he's, he's almost presenting himself as a rapper, but he... He's wearing something that I don't necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily put a wrapper on, if that makes sense, because bucket hats, other genres wear bucket hats too, right? Obviously, though, bucket hats, I would argue, are very hip hop, but you get my point. You know, there is that immediate conflict between, okay, you're like a street dude from LA and you talk about that all the time, but you're wearing this alternative flowery bucket hat, so it's like a contradiction. And look, he even has, I think, a project called Habits and Contradictions. <sighs> And I know that, you know, he's trying to sell that. And it's a very, it's a popular thing that people love to sell. It's very, very, um, it's very attractive to teenagers who don't know themselves and they can buy into that. But for adults, we just kind of look at it like, well, why don't you figure out who you are first and then come back and make some music? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, it, it worked for Pac and it worked for like, you know, Kanye. 
but I don't listen to those guys. That that I'm so contradictory shit. I, I don't like it. You know, again, it's a, it's teen shit. Um, and in the short term, it works. But in the long term, it looks goofy. And that's why people look at Kanye as a goofy because ultimately he wasn't. Con- he doesn't really have a consistent message, right? Or a consistent personality in a, in a way, right? Like, or he doesn't really stand for anything. Let's be honest here, right? If you don't stand for anything, you're going to just look goofy in the long run. In the short term, we're cool with it, I guess. We can get fooled. But in the long term, if you don't stand for something, you don't stand for a particular principle, people are just going to look at you as goofy. So, now, the issue also with Schoolboy Q is... The vocals. Let's just talk about vocally what Schoolboy Q is doing. I would argue that vocally, Schoolboy Q has some issues, right? Like, he doesn't quite have the charisma in his vocals. Like, again, they're not the worst, but they're not super. They're not super great because he doesn't have a personality to flex. And a perfect example of this is look at that part. Okay, my guy Kanye, who y'all know I love dearly. <laughs> Kanye kills Schoolboy Q on his own record. You know what I'm saying? Like. And I'm I'm not a Kanye fan, but Kanye does have personality, right? And it's even the best part of the video, right? At the end of the day, you gotta have some sort of personality. Your vocals gotta show a personality, an appealing one of some sort. And if you don't have it, it's gonna limit you, in my opinion. Now, the other verse that Q had, I think was actually, interestingly enough, maybe one of his better verses was his uh, verse on Two On with Tinashe, right? Which is a song, of course, I completely forgot about. I don't listen to. But it's it's pop. It's like some pop shit. I mean, he just spits some generic pop shit. And funny enough, Q actually sounds at home there. I actually think as a pop verse for that type of song, it's actually pretty decent. And um, this is kind of what, to me, tells me that Schoolboy Q is... He's really a pop dude, in a way, right? I don't know if he's really that, like, entrenched in rap in that sense. He's a dude who raps and and makes music, and he's got an opportunity, but um, he doesn't really have, like, that rap instinct. Um, to and, and that rap instinct has, has obviously, is not, without it, it can't carry you that far, musically, right? You know, you compare this to, you know, someone like an ASAP Rocky who clearly has rap instincts, or at least when him and Yams were making stuff. Like, very, very clear. Like, they had hip-hop instincts. You look at ASAP Rocky, very defined when he came out the gate. He knew who he was. I be that pretty motherfucker. Harlem's what I'm repping. Tell my niggas, quit the bitch and we gonna make it in a second. Right? Like, who are you and where you from? This is hip-hop 101, Right? Like, Rocky and them clearly have this. They were fully formed, for the most part, before they became anything, became, you know, musically, uh, and made stuff that people love. And you need that in hip-hop. And I just never really saw that identity in Schoolboy Q. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, Totally different caliber of artists. And, you know, it's interesting because I remember when Schoolboy Q and Rocky were kind of out, obviously when Brand New Guy came out. I remember forum geeks were like, Q's a way better rapper. Look at how Q murdered uh, Rocky on his own shit and <laughs> and all this stuff. And it's, it's interesting to see where they both ended up. I, I'm not surprised. I'm going to be real with you. Because, again, I love the verse on, on Brand New Guy, and it absolutely fits. You're talking about a very aggressive beat, a game-changing aggressive beat. That aggressive shit works. But... Again, hip hop instincts is about knowing what works on certain records and what doesn't work, right? And being able to adapt and being flexible with the vocals. And if you're not really able to be flexible, it's going to limit you. You know what I'm saying? And and then if you're not going to be able to be flexible, like I would argue, MOP, in my honest opinion, not the most flexible in terms of how they approach their songs. But we respect MOP because they made a lot of bangers in that style. It's like, okay, we're committing to this shit. Like, if this is the style that we're rocking with, we're going to make sure we get amazing beats that showcase that one-note aggressive style. And they did that, right? But the argument I'm making with Q is that Q, even, he never really committed, in fact, to a particular style. And that one style where we know him from, from Brand New Guy, he just never repeated that, like, in a good way, right? He, he, you know, obviously he had that aggression, on other songs, but those beats weren't good and it didn't fit, right? So, you know, when you look at Schoolboy Q at the end of the day, weak beats or sort of like okay beats that he doesn't kill and vocally limited, and then of course he's not saying nothing, 
I mean, that's a limited artist, man. And uh, I mean, I hate to say it, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful to the dude, but I don't know him personally, but I'm just giving my opinion. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I would say that Superboy Q can maybe bounce back. It's, it might be possible, I don't know, because I don't think he's talentless. You know, I don't think, you know, he has a little bit, he has some talent, I would say. Um, I don't think, again, he's like completely devoid of talent. But I will say that I think Schoolboy Q has to figure out who he really wants to be or who he really is and do the best version of that, right? Make sure your beats are in sync with that and like really commit time and focus on that. Don't do like this me meandering shit because smarter, savvier listeners will pick up on that, right? And you're now at a point where you're older. So like you're not really going to appeal to the young you know, the, the, the 14, 15 year old who just wanted to turn up and see, you know, bad bitches in the man of the year video, they, they've grown up. So they don't, they don't care about that. Right. And the younger ones who want to see that are not going to listen to you. They're going to go listen to, I don't know, Corey LeRae or something, right. Or Lada or whatever. So now that you are a little bit more seasoned as an individual, you now can step out and actually take time off and develop something really, you know, creative and cool. So I, I think that the image of schoolboy q it, you know he's on tde so he's kind of like the the real he's a real street you know low level cat but he's latte <laughs> you know kind of in that kendrick where i think he's got to step away from that entirely personally um and just figure out who the hell he wants to be and then you know come up with the best producers that can give him that atmosphere and that vibe and i think his music will just get better that's just my honest opinion all right love y'all thank y'all for rocking with me as always Peace and love.